Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Breakdown. I'm Tony. You guys know Scump. We've had yet another weekend of matches, and Tony. it's actually our first show. You go ahead. Slip that one in there. Tony has tits. Tony has pecs. It's our first show in a long time. So since we've last done a breakdown. It's been two weeks. Optic have won major three. Yeah. Actually, yeah. We didn't yeah. do one after the major. Optic Optic won major three, and now we're a few weeks into stage four. So far for the boys, things aren't looking too hot. We've had some upsets. We've had some teams turning it up a notch, but welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome, guys. Uh, sorry for the break. Uh, I'm excited to be back. We're running the show again. Let's not waste any time here. We've had a four-match day. Let's get into the weekend review where we break down some of the key matches that we've seen. We're going to be doing the past two weeks, some of the major ones that we've been witnessing. I'm sure that you guys can probably guess which ones we're going to be looking at. Uh, Riley, I mean, just start us off with the first match of today. We're going to go through the first matches today, and then we're going to backtrack to some of the matches that we saw last week that stuck out. Whenever you're ready, Riley. So our first match of the day today, we actually had four. We actually had four out of four top four play today, which yep. always a treat for us to watch. It's always nice to have match days like this where we do get to see the top of the top competition. But honestly, at this point, it's it's so fucking close. And there's a couple reasons why or why a lot of people think it's so close in terms of some of these matches. I mean, there's been a patch. Players MCW got buff, correct? MCW gets buffed. There's now three trophies on the map, which obviously that's changing players' play styles completely. Uh, now instead of running around with dead silence, covert sneakers, they're going to have lightweight boots on. You know, it, it changes play styles completely. Uh, and I think I think teams are just getting better. Yep. I think teams are just straight up closing the gap. And today we're also at the point of the year, and then we'll get right into it. Um, Every team is pretty much playing the same at this point of the year. So everyone, it basically comes down to who's gunning on that particular day. Because, yeah. I mean, just based on repetitions and VOD work, every team kind of knows the optimal way of playing now. So and and I, sense. I want to point out a very just just example that, that stands out to me like a sore thumb. I mean, Vegas comes out. They 3-2 us. Granted, this was a couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago, actually. They 3-2 us, and then they 3-0 New York, and then today, they lose to the Gorillas. They 3-2 Seattle, so it looks like Vegas is clearing away the fifth best team in the game, maybe even arguably fourth with a 3-0 over New York, and now, they just lose to LAG in a 3-0 fashion, kind of in a smoke show, but here we go. Toronto taking on the Minnesota Rocker in a must-win for the Minnesota Rocker, who are sitting at 140 points. I want to point out again, we have a 4 way tie right now between 8th and 11th which is fucking insane yeah now this this the, the rest of the split and the major are going to be insane right every team trying to qualify for champs it's uh it's close and i mean like you just said i mean lag versus vegas i mean that's a that's a series where you think vegas is going to win next thing you know lag wins 3-0 and now shit gets even crazier yep but kicking it off here we had ultra versus minnesota to start the day it was a 1-1 series at the start, and map four is really what stood out to me. I mean, Rocker really threw away a map number four. You're going to see a play. I'm not sure if we're going to show it. If Spart just goes and helps and kills Insight here at the end of the game. Oh, yeah, I can show it right now. You want, you want to see it right five. now? I want to see it right now. Let me plug this bad boy in because, yeah, I mean, this was the only play that really stuck out to me that was just, I mean, game-altering. It yep. is the end of the game. They have it. They literally have it. Riley, you can bring it to me here. They literally have this shit, bro. It is right here. This is game over. Uh, and you're going to see on the mini-map, we can break it down for you right here. Number two on your mini-map. You see the trades go down? He's going to kill Scrap right here. Who is this in Hill? It's Insight in the Hill for the Toronto Ultra. They got to pinch him out. Laying behind the bar. And I think right here, it's just... I think Spart thinks they spawn closer than they actually do, and he goes for cut kills. So I'm going to let this clip keep rolling out. But you can see he turns around, goes back alley, looks for the cuts. Gunless runs at Hill. Insight finds him. And at this point, reinforcements are here. You only needed three seconds, and now it's just a trade fest. Toronto comes out on top in the trades. Ah, it's 
That's a tough one yeah, if you're Minnesota. Because, I mean, the reality is, right, you win that map too. So who's to say that you're not going to go out there and perform map number five? I mean, that was a, a big one, especially for a team that's once again trying to secure a champ spot. Yeah. Every every match is pivotal in trying to earn some of these points. So an unacceptable mistake there from Spart, if I'm being honest. I mean, I don't really – I hate to harp on one player, but right there he just pushes the hill, finds that kill, helps his teammate to get the map's over. And you could clearly see the frustration in Gunless. Like, yeah. Gunless is the one in that play. I would have loved to hear the comms because I wonder if Pierce is like – if Pierce is yelling to yeah. to pinch the fucking hill, yeah. which he might be, uh, but just a mishap mishap from from Minnesota and a big one. I mean, that's a ten points that they could have potentially had, could have potentially grabbed against the top team. Maybe get some momentum rolling into their final matches, and it's just not going to happen. Pull up the, that stat sheet for us again, Riley. I want to point out a couple players from this match. Um, it's Kleenex and Insight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, Jamie, Jamie's been having a great stage so far. I've been pretty critical of him. I feel like uh, post-Major 1, he's been playing a bit below the, the level that we expect of him. I kind of felt like the slang was almost entirely reliant on Kleenex and Scrap. And now I think Jamie, towards the end of the year, is starting to shape up and, and play a lot more consistent. So it's very good for not only him, but Ultra as well. Because when he's playing well, they're they're that much harder of a team to beat. So And Kleenex. Kleenex, what? Does he tie? Did he tie the... He, the, broke, the, he, he broke the hard point kill record. Broke hard point, tied the overall respawn record, which was 40... he was 40, one off the overall. Oh, he got 46? He got 46, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I thought he got 47, which is the overall held by Draza in a control. I think it was a Karachi control as well, which makes no fucking sense. Yeah, it was nuts. But yeah, huge props here uh, from the Minnesota Rocker. It's a tough series for the submachine guns. Obviously, they're dealing with some issues. Uh, new team, uh, Lamar stepped down for personal uh, reasons. So Spark comes in, and right here, the subs just have a tough series. And, I mean, it shows on the other side. It's Toby. If Toby and Insight are playing like that, Toronto becomes a real, real threat. Because Dylan's been playing better in some of the respawns. Scrap is always going to be Scrap, where he's going to be having his consistent series and just putting up those big numbers. Overall, good win for Toronto. Expected to win this series. But, again, with how close these teams have been, you really can't count your chickens before they hatch you got to right. go out you got to play and beat every single team so good win by toronto close games by minnesota props to them just fall a little bit short one mishap could have went game five next series on the day we so had thieves phase. yeah thieves versus face and thieves look fucking good in this series man i mean they look at that off, first map they start off great first map it was a dominant search uh map three goes to to phase but really for me it was map number four i mean Thieves had a bit of a lead there. I think it was like a... I got a clip 80, right here if you want to watch it I think it, it was like an 80-point lead, and then like FaZe gets two sets of four downs, and since then it was just a stopping. Yeah, here it was. Yeah, and this is really where it starts. It's on this P4 hill, and I got to highlight Draza because Draza makes the absolute fucking play here. He's number five on your mini-map. He's going to come off of old. He's obviously watching his statue side, making sure he's not getting pinched, but he just makes godlike plays. I mean... It's just good plays out of their whole team. Wait, are they going to flip here? I believe they flip here. Draza on a four. He's going to kill him. Five. Goes over here. They flip them out. And this is where this is where he starts going rogue. Repositions, watches his middle, gets a two, goes on the seven, goes back to help, gets the cruise. And the big part of this play right here to me is that they flip the map. Yep. They flip the map, they set themselves up for the P2, and this is really where that comeback starts for FaZe and a real heartbreaker for Thieves because, again, Thieves, one they're of those teams too. one of those teams in the pack, they're at 145 points right now. There's really no separation for them either. They're one game ahead, and that five points is really, and I mean really, saving them. And that could come down to save them at the end of the year because it's going to be yeah, a tight race I mean, here. Yep, I 100% agree. And you're going to see the P2. Again, this is where the lead changes. And Draz, he's going to call in the crews going into the P3. Phase, go on to win the map. We can close it there because long story short. That that was unmuted. Let's, let's start talking about the series that we all want to talk about today. It was a tough one. 
Yeah. For the boys, it was Optic versus New York. And Very tough one. For really, the just to sum it up, I mean, our search has been terrible. Yeah. We've lost every single search this split. Our search, I would argue, was the reason we went at, we went out there and won the major. We looked so solid in search. We were clutching. We were playing collective. Right now, we can't win a single search game. What Map is it, three, seven in a row? Yeah. Map three, of course, we were up 2-0 as well. Granted, that I mean, that's the name of the game. It was a bit of a choke, but it definitely happens sometimes, but... The boys have to shape it up and search, and it has to happen quick. Uh, you know, there's a decent chance that we start in the losers bracket, right? We're playing against Boston next. That should really Listen. should be a win. I mean, we should Listen. not fucking lose to Boston. We gotta beat Boston. I mean, holy shit! If we lose to Boston, that's when the alarm bells really start ringing. As for right now, obviously they're ringing. I mean, we're losing series. We've lost four in a row now. Yep. We won our first uh, match of the of the split. We've lost four game fives in a row, seven searches in a row, and it just needs to be better. I mean, we switched up the map pool today. It was Karachi map five for the first three losses in a row. We switch it up today. We were, we tried to throw in a six star, yep. and a couple rounds there towards the end bite us in the ass. Uh, but just look at the look at the the stat sheet. I want to highlight Sib. Sib on the Karachi control was so impactful. And he was winning some gunfights that he should not have been winning. And whenever you're playing a team like us, when someone's doing that, it's impressive because we have all the talent in the world. And uh, Sib dropping 22.25K damage. Yeah, I mean, he went nuts. I mean, holy shit. And then on the other side, though, we got to highlight that boy, Big Brucey, dropping 105 with 22,000 of his own, a 1928 Big Bruce, he was shooting today, too, and specifically was, in that map number one. Yeah, he was going crazy. Maps one I and mean, three. I mean, just a, a few clutches again, right? I mean, Skies gets a crazy 1v2 against Kenny and Shotzi. Like, Shotzi gets left in 1v2. It's just some certain rounds that need some shaping up, and, and hopefully hopefully things get ironed out sooner rather than later because yeah. it's definitely a bit of an unexpected stage so far given we just won the major so and yeah ram says it in chat snd wins championships whenever you're at these tournaments these majors whenever you're playing these league matches you're gonna go game five like you're gonna get pushed to your limit you're not always gonna 3-0-3-1 you're not always gonna win every single respawn you're gonna need to win a grueler search and right now i'm very very concerned because again we've lost seven in a row uh we got to fix it up and it, it's it's hard to believe because at the last major, search was our saving grace. Those invasion searches, game fives uh, on Sunday at the major, we beat New York in one in the loser semifinal to get top three. We then beat FaZe in one, which, I mean, there were some very insane clutches that came from that in that game five. Yep. I mean, you remember the Brandon clutch? Yep. I mean, there were a couple crazy ones that maybe we don't always get away with, but search was really our bread and butter. And then we go into the grand finals against Toronto and win another invasion search. Uh, and today we lose it. So, got to get the searches down, it's Pat. got to be better. Got to get the searches down. But I do want to highlight a couple of plays here. If you want to bring it to me, Riley, I got a couple of plays for us. This one, I just love this one right here. I mean, look at this setup out of New York. Uh, it's on map number one, Karachi, which obviously we need this map. We've, won we've lost three matches in a row. We need a little momentum on our side. I mean, AG just makes an amazing play. He plays his life, bottom three stairs, comes up the side, bangs one, finds a freebie. I don't know what this guy was doing, laying down mid-alley. And then boom, we come through junk side. Kismet is forced to back out of the hill, and that's a textbook break with 40 seconds left. And Pred basically spearheads it. Chachi tries to play his life low window, gets one for one, team nade. Beautiful plays out of AG. Wanted to highlight that. Beautiful plays on the team. Next up. You can just keep them rolling. I mean, right here, we got to rewatch this round 11. Uh, it doesn't end up going our way, but we do watch all round 11s that happen, happen on Sundays. So here we go. Invasion, search, and destroy. We talked about it. I mean, we win this map. We're up 2-0. We win this round 11. I know a lot of people like to say we jinxed it. Yeah, but we're going to see a Hydra two-piece here mid-tank, and, and that was the real kicker. I mean, if, if we find a trade there, a different round... Best you're also going to see as this plays out towards the end. I mean, you're, you're going to see a play where Shotzi tries hopping the bomb. I'll bring slow, it up when we get there. But the the Yeah, There's and he, tight, he gets to the bomb, and he gets kind of an awkward timing where he, he has the bomb stuck in his hands, and, and it's just a couple mishaps here. Uh, I really do like this play from Kenny uh, that we're going to see at the end here after this round develops a little bit. Their bang is about to happen. Kiz slides out to A-bomb. 
I believe a grenade comes in. Yeah, Bruce gets hit by a grenade. Hydra finds the free two-piece in the back. But I love this play out of Kenny. Kenny's going to rewrap through B-bomb, push out our street, but New York makes a better play. They they realize they have him isolated, and they three-push through A street, and they make sure that they kill him. Kenny almost does find one, which would have been huge, great pick, yeah. but it just doesn't end up happening. It doesn't fall our way, but this goes, you know, up 2-0, completely different series. But that's Call of Duty for you. Yep. See right here, Antrax hopping the bomb. His teammate, Ken, calls out he's coming. The bomb gets stuck in his hands for a second. And right there, I mean, if Shotzi drops that bomb and gets that kill, the round's over, we win it. It just couldn't get it done. Couple mishaps. Speaking of Shotzi, though, right back to me, Riley. This is during a listen-in. I mean, right here, pivotal moment in the game. 159, 155. Backs against the wall. We're down 2-1 in the series. Look, just look at number six on the minimap. It's Shotzi. I mean, he's had some very, very bailout plays this entire season and hard points. And this is another one. He pinches garage, gets one, finds the two piece on Sib. Now look at the now look at the mini. Three pieces of on Hill. I mean, Shotzi has been unbelievable for us, uh, especially in respawns lately. And that's just another moment right there. It's that, that could have been very easily a full 60 for New York if he dies without getting us any kills. Uh, but that doesn't happen, and he's still playing his life. But eventually going to drop. But does the damage. They only get some scrap time off of it. Huge play out of Shotzi. Zinni, what do you think needs to happen, brother? Uh, the search needs to become way better. I mean, we're losing two searches every single series. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you lose two searches, you lose the series. It's basic math. Our points look good that series, right? Which yep. I would expect out of our team, but the story is search, man. I mean, we're, we're winless in the entire split in search. It needs to be better. Winless in the entire split? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. I thought we at least got one in our first series. Did we? I thought... Yeah, I thought we got at least oh, one. Oh, okay. So, so we just lost seven in a row. But come back to me, Riley. We're going to look Post at... Post Miami, we have not won a single search. Yeah, seven okay. in a row. It's yeah. not great. We're going to watch the game losing round here. We saw the jump up from New York earlier in the series where two of them jump up in an actual crucial 2v4 that Kenny and Bruce end up clutching up. In this one, they play it patient. Uh, it actually becomes... A 2v4 for us right here uh, in a flurry of kills. I thought we were about to go 5-4 in this. I don't really know what happened, so I kind of wanted to watch it back. Shotzi goes in, gets shots down. Playing his life. Playing his life. Kenny finds one. Pred finds one. And then I guess we just get pinched in. Kismet finds two. And Hydra finds two. It's just... Oh, man. The search and destroy struggles have been very prevalent, and that's really all that there is to talk about. Uh, hard point's still been solid, but when you're losing two searches a series, it's very hard to win, especially at the top level. You can get away with it at the start of the year, not at, not, not at the end of the year, because these teams are too good at respawn. They're finally learning the game. They're learning how to take their space on the map. Yep. Got to lock it in and search, man, and it's just not going to get it done. And that's uh, that's really all I want to say about the series. Anything else, Zen? Nope. Search. Search, search, search. Search, search. I mean, that's seriously it. That's all I really care about right now with the boys. All right. In our final match of today, LAG yeah. up against Vegas. This one was shocking. Vegas had been on quite the upswing. Johnny popping off, Attach popping off. LAG comes out, and they smoke him 3-0. I mean, it was dominant. DC drops 1.23. And we saw him talking some shit into the webcam at the end. Oh. Vegas just looked uh, a bit lackluster this series. Looked like their guns weren't too hot. And more so, I want to highlight, I, I want to give flowers to LAG because they showed up today. Dude, LAG showed up in a big way. Because LAG, uh, what what did they do in their last match? Didn't they lose their last match and we were like, oh no, they 3-0'd Boston. What was the match before that? They get 3-0'd by FaZe. They get 3-0'd by Heretics. So LAG, you know, they beat they get their win over Boston, but this was really a must win for them again. This 100%. was they were at 130 points, Vegas is at 140 points. This is a 10 point swing for these two teams. You know Vegas would want to have this. LAG comes out and is impressive today. Yep. And Fame in the interview, he says, "We think we can go on a run." I mean, these guys are confident. 
Yes, sir. And I can't wait to see how this last weekend of matches unfolds because it's about to be all on the line. Remember, these are 10 points per match, and we're getting down to it. The major's going to be insane. The major has no fans, which... Hey, do you that, think... I have a question for you. Do you think our team, knowing that there's no fans going into the major, has affected like our practice and not. our really, mindset? There's no way. No, I doubt it. You don't think so? There's no way. Not at all? Do you think it'll not. affect us at the actual major? Because we're used to playing... I our think, players are used to playing in front of you know the green wall. Yeah, I think... It's definitely a big shift. I think the, the top teams especially are very used to playing in front of the crowd because they're on the stage more. And, you know, if you're phased, you're used to getting booed loudly. And if you're optic, you're used to cheers. And I definitely think it might screw up the dynamic. Um, it just... It's a lot less hype, man. I mean, it's just... Kind of like an empty room, it feels like, but not. Nah, I, I mean, it is an I empty room. Yeah, I, I don't think it should affect any team's practice, especially not ours. Uh, you know, it's one thing it's one thing to get to the top, and it's one thing to stay at the top. So I'm really hoping, you know, we're still... It's not easy. ...coming into practice every day, just like we were before we won Major 3, you know? I mean, the community's got to understand, like, everyone is watching your VOD. After you win... After you win a, a tournament, everyone is watching your VOD. And, yep. I mean, seven losses in a row in search. Karachi used to be one of our bread and butters at the start of the year and midpoint of the year. Karachi's been one of our bread and butters. Yep. Now we can't win it. It goes to show you these teams are studying us, and we need to switch some things up, and we got to do it fast. That's all I want to say. Um, that's all I want to say on it. And uh, congrats to LAG on a big win today. That's the weekend review. Any matches... That stuck out to you for the past two weeks. I had a couple that I just wanted to brush over really quick. We don't really have to go in depth into them, uh, but Vegas with the three-two win over Seattle because yep. Seattle was our fifth place team. They've been looking hot. Vegas three twos them, and then really just our last three losses before today. I mean a three-two to Vegas, a three-two to Rocker, and a three-two to the Ravens. Yep, teams that we should not be losing to. That being said, those teams have been turning up a notch. Especially Vegas. Uh, Ravens and Rocker, maybe not so much. Those are a bit tougher, but nonetheless, we need to be better um, going forward. Question, are the top four getting worse or are the bottom eight getting better? Or is it a mixture of a mixture the both? mixture of both. Because um, I think FaZe... I think more so the top eight are getting better. I think FaZe still looks like FaZe. Yeah, FaZe, FaZe, eh, FaZe looks good. They don't look as dominant. I don't think any of the top teams look as dominant as they don't as look they as dominant. Before. They do get pushed so, to a game five versus so the Ravens. Maybe that's not top four falling off and more so the top eight improving, I think. Chat, what do you guys think? Top four getting worse or top eight get it, or bottom eight getting better? I'm actually curious to see what your guys' opinion is because obviously, again, we've had some buffs. We've had some some big game changes. Six star no longer is a five hill map. Yep. It's now a four hill map. That could be affecting some teams. There's a lot of things that have been changing in between major three and this fourth split. A mixture of the both is what we're getting from the chat rooms in. Yep. And I would have to agree. I think it is a mixture of both. I think there there's uh there's always that point in the year where that tip starts to happen. That tipping point yep. starts to tip over. And you start to see some of the the bottom teams get a little more competitive. This year, it's taken longer because the skill gap has been higher in this game. But it's finally happening. And people want to say it's EQ, online, all that bullshit. Um, no excuses. I mean, that's just that's how it is. Yep. All I right. Agree. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, that's our weekend review. We've got our team of the week. Wait, we can change up our team of the week, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we pick two and chat picks two. That's how we. That's how we've been doing it. Okay. Uh, and I want to go first. I got a no-brainer already locked and loaded. Do you mind if I go first? I know who you're gonna pick who. All right. Let, huh? Yeah, I'm picking Insight. Jamie has been one of the the players that has been on the bubble recently. Uh, Jamie's been playing unbelievable. Insight. He drops a one point what three five today. Absolutely yeah. drops ball sack on him. Uh, this guy Jamie. He's been playing some high-level Call of Duty for this Toronto team, and that makes them much scarier. Because, again, Dylan was struggling a little bit. Jamie was struggling a little bit. Kleenex and Scrap were being the two consistent ones. Now Jamie starting to step things up as well as Envoy. Toronto's starting to look scary again, man, towards the towards the home stretch. I 100% agree with Insight. I'm actually going to go with another AR next. I'm going to go Sib. I think recently Sib's been turning it up a notch. I think Sibs look gross, man. People have been very critical of him all, all season long. 
Um, usually, I feel like the slaying was pretty reliant on Hydra. And I think Sib now, I mean, has been really outperforming Hydra in some of these matches when it comes to slaying. So I think Sib, no-brainer, team of the week this weekend. Even Kismet been stepping it up. Yep. I feel like a lot of these like players on these top teams that have been a little bit lackluster and slacking are starting to pick it up again. And that's how quickly it can turn. You know, a player, once they realize they start to, to slack a little bit, that player is going to really work on their game. And whenever they get a good game under their belt, it's really going to elevate them. Uh, I mean, Kiz had a good series against us, especially in the searches. Ladies and gentlemen, your pick. Who do you guys think deserves to be on the team of the week in our final we two, two weeks? two SMGs. For last two weeks. We need two I have SMGs. One in mind. I have one in mind. I got one in mind as well. We'll see what the chat wants to pick, though. I'm down for suggestions. Chat room. What do you guys think? Okay, well, there's one. Yep, that's one I was thinking. Okay, there's two of the same. That's the one I was thinking. Okay, well, they're throwing out the names that are typically thrown out. I mean... I'm going to go Kleenex. Yeah, that I'm I 100% think, down for that. I think Kleenex is no, a no-brainer. I mean, he breaks the hard point kill record today. He had an unreal performance... Uh, especially today and once again all season long, obviously a monster. So, dude, he looked fucking different today. Yeah, I did. mean, he looked crazy, dude. He was on that Vista hard point. He was slamming, bro. Like he looked like he was in the Matrix. They said he was seeing code at one point. They thought that he was the one. Yep. Uh, when Toby is in takeover mode, he's one of the best in the game. Uh, we've been known this for a while now. Guy's insane. Whenever he's on. And today he was on, and his POV looked fucking nuts. I'd like Next to, up. I'd like to make an executive here. Okay. I'm going to throw TJ on there. TJ Halley. I why think why TJ, do you say that? Because I think TJ went crazy against us. Okay. I think he's been stepping it up a notch uh, overall for the Carolina Royal Ravens. In okay. A, in a pivotal moment where they're needing to turn up. I think TJ has been doing his thing. I'm feeling like TJ. What do you think? I'm down to throw Tej on there, man. He against us every single time that it looked like we were gaining some momentum, he would come through and pop a big two piece to shut it down. And that's what a lot of teams haven't been doing, especially against like us or FaZe or some of the top teams. Like when a star player gets going, yep. teams won't really shut them down and stomp on stomp on that momentum. But every big two piece Tej needed to get, uh, especially against us, there were a couple moments where it looked like we were about to break out and then Tej would pop a two piece keep his team in the game. So I'm 100% down to throw that boy Tej on there, that boy Bob. That's our team of the week, ladies and gentlemen. What do we think about it? I feel like it's pretty unanimous. I feel I like mean, it's a solid team. Yeah, of the week. I mean, Tej and, Tej and Toby both popping off, yeah. Sib and Insight popping off. I feel like it's a pretty good um, roster. I mean, I can't lie. I would have loved to put Shotzi on there if we were getting some wins. Yeah, think, it's hard I to think put. Ant's been doing his thing. Obviously, Brandon has a monster matchup today. LAG is weird. Vegas is also weird because for a second I was thinking like Johnny or Attach, and then they get 3 0 today. So it's hard, man. It's hard. It's it's hard to call these series. It's hard to predict who's gonna win, and it's hard to make a team of the week because we don't know what the fuck's going on, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Next up, our 1v2 guest. It's a perfect segue. It's not Tej, but it's that boy, Long Neck Johnson. What, what is up? good, brothers? Oh, What's my up, God. Oh, How are we doing tonight, boys? Look at this awesome overlay. Yes, this and is... And our Omen monitors, dude. This Ooh. is presented by Omen Johnson. Yo, thank you for joining us. I got I to gotta start it off. First off, how you doing? How you doing? We're not going to start off yet. I'm doing good, man. As you guys just talked about, we're in we're in quite the conundrum, man. A four team tie right now with uh, with Thieves being five points ahead, and you know going into a LAN, obviously uh, wins at some point can get to 15 points. So it's gonna get crazy, man. So um, just looking forward to the next week. Yeah, I can't I can't imagine. And I gotta say, you yo, look like you've been chilling with Ghosty in terms of stash game. That's up no, there. Um, we we had some drinks earlier. Did you? Uh, yeah, we went and got some barbecue today. <laughs> oh, how got was it? Drinks. I saw I saw Tej's tweet about oh, where's the best barbecue oh, in oh, dude, Charlotte. Dude, dude, Tej was getting uh, Tej was getting pounds of brisket. Just no, out to he, him. he he needs to he, stop. And then we walked out, and the first thing he does is he looks at me and he goes, "Yo, insomnia." No, like, are you, wait, are you being dead serious? 
Yes. <laughs> Yo, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't yes. fucking stop. Uh, he's, dude, he does not stop. He's Yo. a vacuum. Johnson, I got to give you props, mm. dude. That fucking joke that you made about Vickle and then the dead stare into the camera, bro. I, I haven't <laughs> laughed that hard at an interview in maybe ever. Besides like <laughs> the what about it works for you or... Or the Shotzi one, bro? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> it's gotten so soft. Like, I, so the backstory obviously, me and Vickle teamed on Florida last year. We're really good friends. So, like, for us, like, it's just like a, a little joke, you know? But, like, for the average person watching, it was like, whoa, like, yo, he just, he, he really meant that. Like, he said it with his chest. Like, I was staring into the camera with straight deception. Like, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I see, I, I just, I see why people gravitate towards scraps so much now because it's kind of, we've kind of lost that element. Uh, obviously, when you both played, you kind of know what I mean. Um, I feel like we don't have as much of that anymore. So, I mean, hey, man, I mean, I'm down to keep doing it, I guess. So, I mean, fuck it. It would have been a little. It would have been a little bit nicer if we beat them. Obviously, uh, losing to them, you know, kind of, kind of doesn't look as good. But all good. I We're mean, still, I don't. Uh, I didn't take it serious. I thought it was fucking yeah. hilarious. I mean, holy <laughs> shit. Well, Dude, let it was me super on the fly. Super on the fly. Let me uh, let me start off. Let me start hitting you with some with some hardball questions. So, with you and Clayster on the same team, talk to mm -hmm. us about that dynamic. P because both of you guys are very vocal, very leader-like players. How do you guys kind of bounce off of each other whenever you're going through team talks and discussing what needs to be done on the map? Um, so, me and Clay, we've obviously teamed together a few times already. This is like the third time, I think. Um, so, we're just like pretty good at like, you know, passing back and forth the flame. Um, you know, we... Uh, Obviously, there's going to be times where, like, maybe we bump heads or something, but we have pretty good communication skills. We usually can hash it out, talk it out, and, and kind of come to a resolution or, uh, you know, get on the same page. So uh, just a lot of reps together, a lot of experience together, and just kind of obviously we're really good friends outside of the game. So uh, it's just pretty seamless. Absolutely. And who would you say, if you had to, who is the more vocal out of the two of you guys? Um, probably me. Uh, what I do want to give a huge shout out to is Tej. Um, so wow. like, a lot of people will obviously think Tej is maybe a little bit quieter that I've teamed with him in the past, or maybe just like certain stigmas. But like, at least on this specific team, he's like taking a very big role in stepping up in the comms and just being way more vocal on his opinion. And uh, when players that are especially that have been playing a while like change certain things like that. Uh, I think it's like kind of impressive because like those aren't like easy tendencies to really like, you know, completely dissect, pick apart and get better at. So uh, he's done a really good job at that this year. Yeah, I, I personally, I love to hear that because, I mean, obviously I've teamed with Tej uh, way back mm -hmm. in the day at this point. I mean, over probably half a fucking decade ago, uh, yeah. but he was always really quiet and not not really quiet. He definitely chime in on the team talks, but it surprises me to hear that. You know, he's maturing as a player and obviously teaming with you and Clay, you guys probably pull it out of him a little bit more because I feel like you guys involve everyone in those talks. Uh, so I'd fucking love to hear that out of Tej, that boy. No, yeah. Tej, Tej definitely has carried a stigma for a long time. I mean, even when I play with him on Breach, like, Tej is definitely a lot more vocal now and I think takes it a lot more serious than he used to. Tej used to be a, a bit of a lazy bastard and uh, I actually think he does, like, at least with my experience, you, you're playing with him currently. Uh, he really does want to win and like oh, does, yeah. does do his best to put his best foot forward to help the team win. Uh, Johnson, I want to ask, you guys get a big win against Optic. Mm. What does that do for team morale in the running for champs? Because obviously you're playing against major champs right now, or at least everybody the whole year has been talking about the top four being the top four, and everybody else can't really fuck with them, I guess, is, is the community outlook on it. Did that one feel special? Like, did that one give you guys a bit more confidence? Or, I mean, maybe as a team, it's good for, like, just the, to reaffirm that we can, like, beat top four teams. No doubt. It's good to, like, see the proof come out. But, like, obviously, this stage is kind of, like, the tail for us. Like, we've had so many game fives. Um, I think I'm, I'm not 100% sure on this. Maybe it was only two of the series. Uh, but we go game five with FaZe every single time. Usually our series with New York or game five every single time. So we know we're right there. We just have to, like, clean up our decision making uh, individually and as a team and make sure that, like, in every situation that we are on the same page, just make sure our map pool gets better and better by the day so that depending on what team you play, you have a good matchup no matter what. Um and just, you know, it's champs time. You guys know how it is. You kind of have to shape up everything uh, and, like, really lock in at this time. You know, everyone, it was like what you guys were just saying. Everyone at this point is really good. 
Uh, you even, you know, LAG this weekend looked lights out. They, I think, didn't even lose a map. No pun intended. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no pun intended, but um, so every team's just playing good right now, man. So it all comes, it's all going to come down to little things on who qualifies and just who puts in the extra little effort for sure. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about, because uh, obviously everyone knows the preparation's going to get ramped up. It's champs time. Practice hours might go up a little bit. VOD hours might go up a little bit. Talk to me about, obviously, the recent buffs. Now there's three trophies in the game. Some of the maps have changed. Like, just talk to me about how all those little things have have they thrown your team off a little bit or was it more seamless and just came more natural to you guys? So like, for example, at first we gave Gwyn the trophy at the beginning of this stage. And then after like a match or two, we kind of realized that like, you know, maybe T should have it. So I'm sure other teams kind of went through the same thing, like kind of figuring out who their third trophy in respawns is going to be. Um, the four bullet MCW is huge. Um, you know, the, these certain power spots that people are playing, like, it, you're way easier of a rip now so like breaks are going to come a lot more easy just being able to like kind of just you know square up with someone and rip them off a heady um on top of that what else uh what else oh the trophies in snd so trophies got nerfed down to two ticks per projectile now yep um in the snds you're still only running two trophies so you're actually losing you know two ticks yep um of tacticals in snds um, it's very noticeable on a map like Six Star, right? People use the smoke to retake bomb sites a lot. Um, certain maps, it's not as noticeable because you're just using the trophy to kind of get control of something off rip of the round. Um, I mean, even even Karachi uh, is big. If you like, if you nade stack now and you throw more than four tacks on the street, and they have two trophies, you can you can break it now. So um, it definitely changes things a little bit. It's one of those things you have to sit with your team, talk about, kind of re-go over the map, see what you can still do, see what you kind of have to implement and uh, how you have to adjust uh that's kind of the biggest takeaway otherwise you know these stages they go really quick so was it against you guys on the karachi was it you guys that yes, threw the pre-nades uh over yeah. at fire car and and killed us because kenny's trophy was too far back yeah so i blew my nade up a little bit higher it probably still would have it probably still would have killed him um brandon also had marksman on um that's like kind of one of those uh routes that you can throw that trophy with Marksman. If the other team throws the nades a little late, you're But good. you're like... Yeah, you're really throwing that yeah, shit Yeah, you're slow. tossing yeah. that sucker. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure his didn't pop in time as well. Nah, it didn't. So that could have that could have been it. But um, I went and rewatched it because, like, we called the stack the nades, but, like, I wasn't expecting a two-piece out of it, you know? Like, maybe their weak crossing bridge or something uh, was kind of, like, the plan. But I went and rewatched it, and the nade just kind of blew up next to the balk, so... I don't know if it would have even hit the trophies. I don't know if it was because he had marksmen, but... Maybe they were just uh, money nades. I, I mean, yeah, but you know how it is with nades like that. It's it's 50-50, you know. Flip a coin. Hey, it's nice whenever two pop up on the kill feed, though. You're probably like, oh, oh I, I fuck, was, yeah. I was, I was screaming, plant the bomb, plant the bomb. <laughs> yeah. For so, sure. For sure. Uh, so we talked a bit about Tej and Clay. Talk to me about Gwyn, man. I feel like Gwyn's kind of like still to the community a bit of like an unknown guy. I heard he only only eats Lunchables. I heard, well, I would say for a while he was a lot of people's rookie of the year. He was going crazy. Then I kind of feel like personally he fell off the cliff a little bit and now he's like back on the upswing. Just talk to me about, about Gwyn generally, who he is as a teammate, as a player, because I, I feel like the community would love to know him a bit more. Um, Gwen's, Gwen's a little bit more of a quiet kid. Um, he's probably the best free for all player I've ever played. Um, he'll sit and warm up in free for alls and just actually spawn trap us sometimes and just call us shit. But, <laughs> but, um, he's just a really good player, man. He listens really well. He takes in information. He's very smart. Um, I think he's, you know, this is his first year in the league. I think he's, uh, throughout the year gotten a lot more vocal, um, and just kind of like, you know, what's comfortable for him, what he thinks is going wrong and just expressing, uh, yourself to your teammates. I think he's learning a lot better throughout the year. Um, he's great at every game mode um, across the board. Um, he had like one to two hiccups this stage in a series. And that can, that I can safely say since I've joined this team, that's probably the only two like mid-series he has had. Like he's an incredibly consistent player. Um, and, you know, as time goes on, he's just going to be one of those players that just get better and better. Um, but like, yeah, outside the game, I mean, Isaiah likes anime. He likes Call of Duty. Um, lunchables? He loves some lunchables. Uh, Does he actually eat lunchables yeah. every single day? 
So when we go to Target together, I'm not even kidding. Like he buys them out, man. Like, <laughs> like I, I saw a little 13 year old kid walking down the Lunchable aisle last time, and I just saw Gwyn just scoop up five packs of Lunchable. I was like, this poor kid, bro. Oh He's not gonna God. be able to get a single pepperoni Lunchable. What That's a fucking great. beast. Well, but, I got yeah. I got to ask this one. So you and Clay being on the team, is there is there that little bit of extra pressure of of not making champs? Because both of you guys, very tenured players, even Tej at this point, very tenured players. Clay, I don't think he's ever missed a champs before. So just talk to me about if you guys have had any talks like, yo, we got to make this shit, or if it's kind of just really focusing on drilling into practice and just setting yourself up, or is there that thought? I'm a firm believer, man, that if you really go and leave it all out there and do everything in your ability to, like, help your team get better, to help yourself get better, and just to, like, make sure you're ready for all your matches for the rest of the year, and just focus on that. And whatever happens, you did everything you could. Like, we're putting everything we have into this. Like, we're watching balls before or after scrims. We're sitting there talking about the matches and sitting there talking about some maps for, like, 20, 30 minutes just to make sure that certain mistakes don't happen again. Whereas I'm sure all these other teams are doing this as well. Um, but it's just going to, like I said, it's going to come down to the little things. It's going to come down to land. So um, I think that's really good for us. I think we've been a great land team so far this year. Um, I think that, you know, there's no fans. I think that's going to also affect some of these teams. Um, maybe some of them in a positive way. Maybe some of them in a negative way. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to come down to land. I'm really confident with our team on land. So uh, we're just going to do our best. Obviously, you guys play Boston next week as well, right? Yeah, we play Boston yeah. and Toronto. And I didn't know, actually, I didn't know Clay missed champs last year. I fucking had yeah. no idea he missed champs last year. Oh yeah, that's my it bad. It was close. They run, they run Vegas. I, it was, it was kind of. I think they were like going into this part of the year. I think they were like ten or fifteen points behind, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but they were like right there. Yeah. Um. Well, you actually just set up another great question. How do you think no fans is going to affect your team? I mean, backs against the wall, fucking. You know how how do you think that's going to affect you guys going into it? Um, so Carolina, we get, we get a lot of love at events, um, going into this team. I didn't, I mean, obviously Clay's on the team, so you're expecting some crowd support, but like they've been pretty crazy. So, um, you know, I would definitely say that if there was an event, we would have some sort of an advantage in the sense of the crowd. Now that there isn't a crowd, we may not get that crowd buff, but I don't think it's necessarily going to hurt us in any way. Um, I think I'm a player that can definitely like thrive off the energy. I think Clay's another one, maybe Tej, but like. I think in, in another sense, whereas it might not be great for us three, I think for Gwyn, him being extra super cozy is going to be even better. Like, he might have a 1.5. Like, I love so. I love to hear that because we are rooting for you. I DM'd you. I mean, we're really pulling for Carolina out of the, I mean, out of the other teams. 100%. We're pulling for Carolina. Dude, it's been, a, it's been a crazy little mix. This is probably, I mean, this is definitely the closest it's ever been, right? Oh, I, I mean, mean yeah, right now it has it's to nuts. be. I mean, it's a four-way tie between eight through eleven right now, and then Thieves is like mm. right above that with, but only because they have that five-point cushion. So, I mean, the the major mm. is going to be crazy, man. And it's yeah. it's so weird because I feel like how this this year has kind of developed. It's like, dude, at the through the midpoint of the year, the the gap from the top four to everyone else was kind of nuts. Now it's like to make champs, everyone's so close, yep. but everyone's getting so fucking good at the same time, and teams are actually improving now. So it's going to be a crazy race. I mean, we wish you nothing but the best and all the luck in the world because we got to see Johnson at champs. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Um, another thing I want to throw in there is uh, the last stage of every year gets a little uh, get, it gets a little sketchy in the sense of, okay, yeah, the teams that need to win and make the top eight obviously need to show up. Um, but in these top four teams that are, you know, definitely locked in, they are going to test out their map pools a little bit. You know, they're going to try to round everything out but that in, in their matches before champs. So um, you have these matchups where like certain teams, they probably wouldn't lose to a team on their, you know, three or four best maps. And, you know, since we're in the last stage, they're trying to get every single po uh, possible practice rep they can for, you know, for champs. So. Um, the last stage of, of every year kind of gets a little rocky with and a little dicey with some of these wins. So, But, hey, it makes it more interesting for everyone to watch, that's for sure. I mean, we're sitting here loving it. Next weekend's going to be crazy. The major's going to be crazy. And then, obviously, whoever makes champs, it's going to be crazy. Zinn, you got anything else for my, my man? I've known the guy for 12 years, man. I got nothing else, Johnson. I've got one, yeah. if you guys don't mind. 
Riley's got a question. Let's hear it, Riley. So uh, the community has been wondering, and maybe you've answered this already on Twitter, and I just missed it, but there was a clip where they cut to you. I think it was at the end of the first hard point against us uh, where it looked like you were texting or something on your phone during like the last five seconds. Uh, can you confirm or deny <laughs> whether or not you were sending a text or your controller came unplugged because the community is demanding answers? All right, so first off, I got to preface this by saying the Formula One pit crews, those guys have to be the iciest people on the planet. So my controller disconnected, and like it was at the worst time because I knew that you guys were obviously like about to like all break the hill. Like A guy's finding bridge to bow, guy's hitting their door, and I see controller disconnected. And, like, I didn't want to check any of my teammates because the score was so close. Yeah. So I'm just unplugging it. And, like, I'm not even kidding. My hands started shaking when I had to <laughs> plug my controller back in. And then Clay, Clay died and the spectator me. He's like, why is Tyler not moving? So Clay sits next to me and he's looking at me. He's like, bro, are you good? And I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and then I finally got it plugged back in and I died. But, oh, my God. Yeah, that was – if we would have lost that, I would have been broken. Oh, my God. If we would have lost that map one, I would have been shattered for oh, sure. Yeah. That would have been tough. That's a hard bounce yeah. back mentally too. You're like, fuck that. We <laughs> had that shit. The boys like just absolutely costed. You like, might need oh to get God. a new wire. No, I already got one. We're good. That a boy. Yo, Johnson. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, I mean, yeah. Again, just good luck. Good, good fucking luck for champs, man. We hope to see you there. Yeah, hey, thanks, boys. I appreciate you having me, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, you too, likewise, brother. man. Good luck. Peace out, Tyler Johnson, man. God, we love him, man. God, he's a ten -year we love veteran. him. He's a ten-year veteran, but guys, it is the one of our favorite times. It's time for me to wax his ass in rapid fire, and I'm excited. I just want to get right into this shit. I mean, I just want to get into it quick. I think you've won the past couple times. So, I go first. Uh, I mean, it's up I to answer you. first. Let's you, go. You want to answer first? One moment. Oh, we got to spin the fucking wheel. We got to spin that wheel. Yo, can we get a W fellow in the chat, please, for my man Johnson coming on? Uh, yeah, we were, we were, uh, we were going to do one of our boys if they won, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But Johnson, obviously he's our fucking boy. He said, we'll come on. We wanted to get someone from a bubble team and who better to get than our boy, Tyler yep, fellow Johnson. Absolutely. I mean, the, the motor mouth himself. Here we go. Spin that wheel. Here we go. Oh, big dog one. Oh my god, I hate this. We got a big dog a one. Big here. dog right, one, man. Fucking... Yo, ah. there we go. There he is in the chat too. Holy shit. Uh, fucking fellow. Thank you, brother. Seriously. Thanks for thanks for coming on, bro. Oh. 50 gifted. You asked me first. Let's go. Alright, on 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 go. You ready? On go. Riley? Three, two, one, go. Which team previously held the map loss record streak? Uh Vegas. Uh, yeah, Breach holds a record for how many series lo series losses in a row? Fourteen. Nope. Fifteen. Who sorry. Who was the only player to drop two one hundred and ten plus kill series this Dossie. season? Which team has had three six zero S and D wins this season? Uh, Phase. Toronto. No. What is the new movement system in Black Ops Six called? Omni directional. Which team scored the third least points in a hard point in CDL history? Uh. Minnesota. What is the prize pool for the Esports World Cup? 1.8 million. FaZe had all FaZe all had a series KD higher than what against 1. Breach? 1.5. How many original maps is Black Ops 6 launching with? Uh 16? No. Yeah, 16. Yeah, Kleenex broke the hardpoint kill record with how many kills? 46. Yep, I'm getting smoked. That's 9. You got 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Holy shit. I was just auto fucking matic. What was the one I got wrong? Uh, which team has had three six O S and D wins this season? It was Ravens. The Ravens. Fuck! I let Johnson down. How am I gonna? How am I gonna let Johnson down like that? You think you're getting nine, brother? No, I'm fucked. Especially because I'm sick and I have brain fog. I'm actually fucked. Free questions. What do you mean? I I was kind of shooting right Those there. Those are pretty free. The one point eight million dollar prize pool. Hold on. Don't try to take that away from me. Sixteen original maps. Forty six for Kleenex. Those are pretty free. Don't try to take let that away from rigged. me. Let's see. All right, here we go. Hold on. I'm not ready yet. All right, you let me know whenever you're ready, buddy. Okay. If you go 10 for 10, I'm going to fucking lose I'm it. Not. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for a tie, but I don't really... I also wasn't here for the first match today, so I, I swear to God. Why are you guys lumping me? I just went 9 for 10. Yeah, they, no, they were shit questions. Riley's fallen off since last year. All right, uh, are we ready? Yep. Okay. 
Three, or you count it down. Three, two, one, go. What is the release date for BO6? October 25th. Wrong. Which? That's right. No, it isn't. October 24th. No, 25th. That's not what it says on the sheet. Okay, Which, we'll restart what? it now because yeah. I'm not losing all this time because of it. It's 25th. Okay, Riley. Well, it's not what it says on the sheet, Riley. Okay, that's a Liley. It's not fucking right on the sheet. It, 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 it's the 25th. It's not right on the sheet. I'll read whatever's on the teleprompter. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait. Uh, read it down again. And then read it <laughs> Three, down again. two, one, go. What is the release date for Black Ops 6? You're 25th, not getting extra time. October 25th. Which team now owns the map loss streak record? Breach. Which player plays each mat match with a pair of 38 specials? Uh, Standy. Which player said he was going to push Vickle's hairline back? Hello. Which team is 0-10 against the top four? Fuck. Breach. No. Which player dropped three 30 bombs and respawns for the loss on Friday? Shotzi? Yeah. Name two CDL casters that are fathers. Uh, Merc and Vance? Nope. Well, I mean, that's... Who was the first team to hold four cruise missiles at the same time? Uh, FaZe? No. I forget that one. Which two players have yet to drop below a point nine in a series this season? Simp and fucking Cell? Cell's one of them. Give you a half point. Yeah, no. I, I should mean, have said Study. I don't know why I said Chance. It was either Study, Pocket, Miles. Uh, yeah, I should have said Study. You got the first four right. It was Shotzi. It was Thieves for 0 and 10 against the top four, which that was that was a hard one. Thieves are is not. It's definitely not intuitive. I would say mine were a bit harder. I can't lie, but it's which, all right. I mean, some of those were softballs, brother. Some were, but which player elected not to plant the bomb in a clutch situation and lost the map? Who would you have said? Linz. Yeah. So you would have got like, you would have got like it would have been close. I would have got a if. I mean, I should have said study that like that one would have been correct. It would have been close, brother. I wouldn't have got the Thieves one. All right, let's move on. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, Riley, bring it to me, my boy. It is our top plays of the past three days, ladies and gentlemen, Sports Center style. Here we go. We're starting it off. Uh, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Are you tight? Yes. All of yours are softballs. All of them. You didn't have a hard one there. Listen, listen. I'll give you an opportunity to get 20 back on the last segment. All right. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. All right. Riley, let me know whenever we're good. Here we go. Day one, top plays. It's that boy, Big P, with a five streak on sub base. Finds two from top off his top three. Finds his third. Kismet seven streak. I don't know where the rest of the clip went. Yo, he's got that dog in him, and here it is. Uh, yeah. Were you here for this match? Uh, I was not here for. Wait, yeah. Wait, was I? I don't remember if you were here for that. The 38 points from the Minnesota Rockers. Yeah, yeah, I was here for that. I was only not here for today's first match. Oh, okay. I came like halfway through. So you're not part timing? No, not at all. That was an insane kill on the Standy Bottom Bridge right there. I mean, this guy can shoot. It's the it's Paco. Zenny take it. I mean, we, I mean, look at the guy. He's in your spawn. He's one of the last people you want in your spawn. Uh, here's AG with a quick little three-piece. Something slight, man. Something nice. Yeah, that was free. That was a freebie. A little flashy. Now we got AG with a four-piece. Oh, and, this mean, one was gross. I don't care how you get it, man. You get a four-piece, it's a damn four-piece. He's just working yeah. that propane. Let's, let's get those like things messy. fixed up, brother. Yeah, propane's are unacceptable. Shotzi going crazy. Once again, he probably would have been our, on our team of the week if our boys had been getting some wins. Oh, I mean, that was gorgeous. shit. Gorgeous. Turn on my boy, Tej. This was a great play from Clayster. I mean, hate to see heads it, up though. play. Yeah, it's against us, so you hate it, but... And it's him versus Dashy in the end. Great great map positioning and also just a very well-played clutch. Guys, uh, Zinni's not feeling good, guys. He, he's been sick all day today. Again, we're just blessed to have him here for the show. Dude, stop. Stop. I mean, some people are giving you shit. They're saying, like, I'm not just going to let him fucking... All right. Your w, I appreciate it, though. He's not feeling good, man. This is a, but an absolute eight spree. Oh, and he's oh, shooting he bodies on the way fuck. down. Against Boston, too. It's like, get a grip. 
Stop shooting their bodies. All right, that's day one for you. We got two more days lined I, up. I wish when that little Google just opened, it said erectile dysfunction or something. Why do you wish that would, would happen to like your a, friend? Like a laugh at you? That's e fucking insane. ED pills? Let me tell you one thing, brother. He works just fine. <laughs> we got that boy lucky. Three piece. Thank you, Riley. Next up, Rial. One versus three. This, this is gross. This was dirty. This was, this was probably one of the plays of the week, honestly. Yeah, this was dirty. Gets the first two on bomb. Plays it patient. I'm sorry to do it to you, Johnson. It's against Johnson. He's going to use his smoke here in a second. Bait out the bomb. Fellow has no choice but to check because of the time on the clock. I mean, overall, just a beautiful play from Real. Here's the, the smoke bait. He's playing Warzone out there. Walks through it. Bada boom, bada bing. Peace out. Johnson, a little frustrated there. Good play by good play by Real, though. I mean, Fellow yeah. had really no chance. This was dirty as well. Gwen, little three-piece. Oh, We're Johnny. a lot of pieces. Yeah, dude, wait. Th this clutch from Johnny. I mean, just talk about playing your timing correctly. Johnny's been popping off. Yeah, 1v3 for him. Not easy to do there. Gets the timing. Usually the other player's closer to bomb. In this situation, he's not. 1v3 for Johnny. He's been looking good. So is Vegas besides today. Oh, this was gross too. Attached. These guys, in this match, they looked fucking like they were just snapping. Line him up down the stairs. Again, attach. Three-piece down the stretch. Hmm. Six streak for him. Next up, insight. Three-piece. Bottom blue. Guns Joe deceives out of his absolute gaming chair for the last. Those are our day two clips. We got one more day, and that should be today, ladies and gentlemen. Our longest clips. Two and a half minutes of just absolute snappers. And it's that boy Scrappy Doodle starting us off here. Down, 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 down. Again, seven streak into a six streak. Dude, we were watching this like, holy fuck. How is he getting some of these kills, bro? Like, like, like right there. Yeah, I mean, He's he weak was, as shit. So this, this was the map I missed. This was that map you missed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's nice to know Scrap was just fucking dude, rubbing ball sack on him. You were here for this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, what? this guy the 46 was... 46 bomb, yeah. This guy was fucking dragging it across some... I mean, holy... Does Insight or... Sorry, does Kleenex have a, a top, like... He might have a top three takeover POV. It's like him, I mean, yeah, Shotzi. Well, yeah, so it's such a tough play stock because it's so aggressive. It just staggers your I mean, push Simpa down much more when he's popping There's off. Simp Abizi, I mean, holy shit. But this guy was 28 and 10 as a sub on Vista. That is just filthy work. Ramp with a three piece. Gunning down phase. Joe deceives with a four piece. Dude, Thieves, again, they lose the series, but they were shooting today out there. Dude, yeah, Joe had some pieces. I mean, shots. This was course. gross. And it's, been, and it's been popping some crazy pieces. This was filthy. This read on the second guy to top red, that was yeah, dirty. That was actually dirty. Next up, Big Brucey. I mean, holy shit. He I mean, stopped shooting people. He dropped like a 1.3 today with over like 105 kills, I think it was. Yeah, he was the only player positive for our team today. All oh, right here, AG. That first kill on Hydra is naughty work, but then he doesn't stop there. Ends up getting the one versus three, technically. Oh, two versus three. Makes a great play here on Caesar. Caesar's going to back up, try to play his time on the forklift. Or tractor, Sorry. Uh, AG just plays it well. He's got time. Goes over the top. Knows he's got him. Gets to the bomb in time. Great play from AG. This guy, 12 streak. I mean, once again, he was the match MVP in this series. Bro, he was 12 streak is good work, especially to capture this point. Against or us, to, uh, too? I mean, it's... Yeah, that air conditioner just kicked on. Lord. I mean, he's popping three pieces. This was crazy. This were this was where I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, he was pieces. That's against Brucey too, and you know that boy Brucey shoot. Next up, we got Flames, little little snake ish three piece. This was great. We got a great interview from him after. I mean, this was a dominant series. Lag absolutely fucking slams Vegas today. Yeah, it goes on a six streak, locks it in. I believe he gets two off his cruise with a team kill, but. Those are our top plays of the weekend. Those boys were shooting out there, man. Sib got to stand out. 12 streak for him. Absolutely nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our last segment of the day. Thank you guys for sticking around. Hope you guys have enjoyed the show. 
It's Guess That Pokemon. It's our last segment. We like yes, to have a little is. fun. We're going to cut call of the community because I'm not going to lie. Our, the questions have been so-so. Um, so we're going to we move on. We, we need the whiteboards, right? We need the whiteboards. They're right in there. I think if we're going to do call of the community, we got to get questions pre-asked and like pick some good questions. Because chat trolls half the time and we're sitting here with our cocks in our absolute hands. Thank you, Zen. All right. What's the stakes for this? We can do 20 gifted so you have a chance to get some back. Or do you want to do 20 gifted? Because then it could go to 70 very quickly. You promise? All right, 20 gifted. Let's fucking go. A 70 gifted bomb would be absolutely fantastic. Riley, run the first. The wedding is steep. Began competing in 2009, so we got a fossil here. First. first Todd World Champion. Okay. Oh, shit. Wait, what? How can somebody be the first COD World Champion, Riley? Was it champs or XP? Oh, it was like literally the first champs. What so game was, was that? Was that BO2? I got my answer. Write it down, brother. And close chats, by the way. Hold on. Close the... I already wrote mine down. I'm not changing it. I didn't... All right. This is the only one I could think of. Flip them. Haggy? Miracles? Oh, my God. It might be Mir. Kill us! Oh, what? Wait. How I is he the was, first? Because the impact. Yeah, but so was Miracles. Yeah, but it wasn't him. Oh, that's some fucking I thought it bullshit. Was, I thought it was Haggy, dude. So it could have been Miracles or Killa. It's one of the two. All right, next up. Or Haggy, no? Yeah, it could have been Haggy, too. 2014. 2014. Winner's bracket final. Dubbed in for Jerd. Ah. Oh. Yes. Wait, what? Uh, Wait, what does that mean? Highest placing, like top three? What was top three? Uh oh, bro, what? You got it? You think you have it? No. What, what was that? Is that Ghost? Uh, 2014. Be began competing. Is that Ghost? Was highest placing... He's never won. He's top three only. My God, this is gonna make me fucking tweak. Brother. Wait, Splice 2018? That World War II? Uh, 2018 is. That was World War II, I think. Oh my God, I'm gonna tweak. Why do I feel like I know this, but I don't? Began competing in 2014. Empire? Yeah, no, that's what's throwing me off. Oh, dude, I got no idea, brother. I think I have it. Really? Yeah. Wait. Flip him. Flip him? Was it fellow? Cooney? Fellow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I tried to just guess off the portrait. <laughs> That's no. never a good idea. 
I didn't, All right. I didn't realize Tyler's number one. I could have sworn he won. Wait, you might actually, you might get that 20 back. This is for it. Yeah. This is for it. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, what? All COD League first team. What is what is the All COD League? Like the first team. Uh oh. Do you know it? Because there's a few options here. Yeah. There's only a few. You know it? Yeah. I think so. There's only a few options here. Either Shotzi, Formal, or Crimp. I guess be formal or it's got to be Shotzi. All right, flip them. Actually, hold on. Flip them. Hold on, I'm thinking for a sec, actually. Give me one brief moment to think this Wait, over. What do you mean? Is it Shotzi? Now, who is it? Come on, show me. Hook. Please be Hook so I keep my 20 gift. Enable. Wow, that's actually a good one. Wait, all COD League? I'm, I was confused by that. Damn, that fucking nub. Free that nub. Free that nub. Say it from the rooftops. Free that nub. Damn. Free that nub. Oh, man. Dude, Enable is a tough one. Here, can you throw this back in there? I will get 30. I will get 30. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into the breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, if you guys did, drop a like. We're live right now on YouTube, so I don't really know what to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, we have one more breakdown next Sunday. So if you guys uh, missed this one, you want to tune into the one next weekend, we'll probably do our final predictions going into Major 4, maybe a couple other things uh, leading into the Major and uh, then a couple days after that, I'm off to the wedding. So yep. we got a crazy next week up ahead of us. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching, man. As yeah. always, love you guys. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Night, guys.